No, there's nothing like appreciative fans to make you feel at home, no matter where we are, whether we're in the USA, in small towns, big towns, large arenas, or even clubs, or halfway around the world to an audience. We love our fans. Man, you were unknown, and by the time you shot it, you were getting a platinum record on stage. Yeah, at least. It was a good time. We shot that in uh, Seattle, the bikini bunnies coming out, and our manager emceeing. <laughs> Ten months out of the year on the road, does it, does it ever work? Is it ever hard? No, we like it like that. Really? Wouldn't have it any other way. Ten months on the road is two months too little out of the year for me. <laughs> the desert and play cowboy for wanted man. Well, come on, we've always wanted to be cowboys, just like I said in the video. But um, it was a dream of mine seeing as how the song was about cowboys and stuff, and that is something that we've all sort of fantasized about. It turned it into a dream of mine on the tour bus and uh, taking us into old Tucson, and the rest is history, as they say. You and your uh, fellow rodents go back a long time. Yeah, we certainly do. Stephen and Warren and myself grew up together in the same neck of the woods. We've known each other for uh, 10 or 12 years. And... Uh, we used to play in sort of rival groups around town, and then fi finally we decided to put the all-rat band together. Never ever wanted to play anything else, <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> when did you decide that you wanted this as a profession, that you were really serious? Well, I, I would, you know, ever since I was about five or six, I suppose I wanted to do it, you know, but it wasn't until I was about 15 that I decided I wanted that was what that was it you know is that or nothing about 15 and say is this what you always wanted to grow up and this do? is what I always wanted to do when I grow up maybe I'll be something else but for now <laughs> this is what I always wanted to do uh, I had a, a time when I was a teenager and I was playing baseball and I sort of made a decision uh, to uh, to go with what I know and that's rock and roll and I think I've made the decision right decision so far. What would you do if you weren't doing this? I would uh, drive a top fuel dragster. Yeah. Sounds good. Did you ever do that? Have you ever raced? Uh, almost. I was involved in it for many years when I was 13 to 16. Do you like to just drive for pleasure now or is it not the same? Drive a car? Yeah, a car. <laughs> or a race car? Well, a fast car, like a sports car. Uh, it can be done for pleasure, but not on the streets. There's nowhere you can drive fast. We filmed uh, the video for You Think You're Tough that night at Long Beach. And that was, you know, the biggest stage setup we've ever had. Because we were not in, in open for everybody on tour. Well, they all had big productions and would have to, like, set up real close to the edge of the stage. And now we have, like, three levels and... And we did the video there, and we had all of our friends down, a lot of other guys that are in bands, like, you know, Ozzy's in it, and some of the guys from Motley, and some of the guys from Scorps, and Carmine Apps, just Jakey Lee, all these friends. And backstage, we were, after the show, back having drinks and stuff, we got everybody in it. So, yeah, that's, you know, I love that video. It's a really good video, too. So, you know, and it shows that night. That was, I think, the big, I think that'll always be the biggest night in everybody's mind, you know, in this group, headlining you know, an arena in your hometown. For being the live band that we are, we, we were just really live oriented. You know, this wasn't a band that was thought up of, you know, in a basement and then, oh, what do we do live? You know, it wasn't that kind of thing. Um, we had played the clubs around Hollywood a long time and then we left and did the tour and we're working on the tour and working these huge arenas with, with, you know, all these people. And we decided, well, you know, wouldn't it be nice to go back to like an intimate club, you know, and, and do a video, you know? And one of our favorite clubs was always the Roxy, world famous Roxy. Um, and so we decided to go ahead and go back there because we love it so much and shoot back for more. That's what we did. <laughs> They say you're a womanizer. Ooh. 
Probably, yeah. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> what can I say? Where are the prettiest girls? Everywhere. Everywhere, any place, USA, Japan. How was Japan? Was that strange for you? No. Just the language barrier was the only thing that was strange, but there's always sign language and, you know, <laughs> ways to getting around and meeting people and stuff like that. We had a good time. Is music really a universal language? Yes. <laughs> That's us. I like this. This is my kind of album. Hello, operator? Yeah. Uh, I would like the number of the Osaka Hotel. Excuse me. Yes. You speak English? Yeah, a little, little bit. Uh, could you help me get the Osaka Hotel? She doesn't understand. All right, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mozi, mozi. When we toured Japan, it was wonderful. Right off the top, it was, it was beautiful. People treated us like just wonderful, you know. But it was such a different country, and everything seems so foreign because it's Japanese, and, and people around you are speaking Japanese, and you're always going, what? What are they saying? And they kind of say something in Japanese, and they kind of like giggle, you know, and go, hey, wait a minute, what's, you know, what's going on? You know, so it was a lot of fun, wonderful audiences, wonderful kids. Rock and rollers all the way. I mean, and, and not just kids. Everybody there was great, you know. And, and we couldn't have had a better time. We loved it. So it's quite a cultural shock for me, being, uh, you know, brought up in the states my whole life, not not been any, being to any other countries or anything until uh, the touring and stuff. This is the first time we've, except the exception of Canada, which we did very briefly. Uh, this is the first place we've really done a lot of intense touring. And uh, it's been quite a, quite a, a nice change. Kind of like a, dr a dream come true in a way because I mean I was very into the Beatles and, and the Who and that, and I would see films of them at train stations and th with fans following them and giving them gifts and stuff. So it's like uh, you know a real flattering. Thing. Such a great I don't speak uh, Japanese very well. Very, very little Japanese. Uh, we just did a show in Osaka, and uh, on the way here to the train, I, you know, they, they give you letters and gifts and stuff like that. And I got my Warren doll hair, and he's got his guitar. Yeah! I find Japan very beautiful, very crowded, good food, fun to play, fun to travel. In, in Japan, they listen a lot more carefully than they do in the States. They party a lot more. You know? they, they're just crazy about rat over here, so it's, it's great. You like that? This is one of my fans here. I met him inside the movie. You like that? Oh, right. I've been looking forward to coming here all my life, you know, but I always thought probably it would be more like a vacation rather than a tour, so I'm, you know, ecstatic to come here and get a little bit of both. But here, the blonde hair or, or, or my height <laughs> I feel out of place in public sometimes I feel like I stick out like a sore thumb which I'm sure I do you know, being six foot five blonde <laughs> sold out number two sold there you go, there you go. <laughs> all right that ought to do it the Toro here is unreal. We can't even get this stuff in our life. Was round and round hazardous to your health? It certainly was. You know, when we did that video, it, it was like a, we got Milton, and it was a big favorite of Milton. What we couldn't get is a stuntman for that that thing that I did. You know, where I go through the ceiling. It's like you know, we could we didn't have a real big budget, and uh, so the shot was you know I had to do it a bunch of times, and uh, it was pretty hazardous actually. It was about the <laughs> most hazardous thing I've done to date, I think. <laughs> As a drummer, do you ever wish you were a little more of a front man? Do you feel a bit hidden? No, because I, I get my chops in, you know. I, I'm, I can be heard. Listen to this voice. I mean, <laughs> my job is to, to keep the, the rhythm section solid.
and play the songs that we write, you know, as opposed to throwing in all my fancy, you know, drum licks. And <clears throat> it, it takes a long time to, to learn how to, you know, play songs instead of trying to show off what you can do. To be a musician and be successful at it, it's almost like a, you know, a real devoted thing, you know, that you got to devote all your thoughts and uh, you know, energy to. So this band, we have, we have four writers in the band. Um, who, who write quite a bit, and it's really unusual. We don't limit ourselves in any way. We write, we use almost every different technique for writing. Sometimes I'll write an instrumental, and Stephen will go, wow, I really like that instrumental. Let me write some lyrics to it. And I'll go, sure, yeah, go, you know, go for it. Just that we've gotten better musically as a, as a group. We've been together about four and a half years now, and it doesn't, doesn't hurt, you know? So there's definitely progression. And from the tour, it helps. Everybody that makes it gets called an overnight success, you know. I've been playing for four, 13 years, 13, 14 years, so, and I've been playing rap for three. And believe me, we never made any, any money or anything at shows and for three years, you know. So that's not really overnight, is it? Overnight is like one night later, you know. I mean, if we formed one day and then made it the next day, that would be overnight. No, it's not. I was watching you making a video the other day, and you were celebrating your fifth birthday party. Yes, I had to celebrate it sometime, so I <laughs> decided to do it on this new video of ours, which is uh, <clears throat> the first single from the new record called Lay It Down. It's about a dream fantasy I had when I was five years old, to be a rock and roller and meet a pretty girl and all the other good stuff. Okay now, Stephen, blow out the candles. Wait, Stephen, don't forget to make a wish. Is Invasion of Your Privacy a new musical step for the band or just a progression? I think it would be uh, more of a progression because we have definitely gotten tighter because of the tour. And uh, the songs are newer and fresher and, and better. Yeah. Definitely a progression. Yeah. Absolutely. Rap and roll is a way of life. Yeah. It's just perfect. <laughs> that now that we are out of the cellar, we are going to be infesting your homes and invading your privacy in a good way this year. <laughs> 